All righty. All right, so today we're sitting down for another one-shot review. Today, the movie that we're reviewing is It Lives Inside. And uh, I'm going to try to make this kind of a shorter review if I can, because they keep ending up being like over 20 minutes, but I don't know if I necessarily am giving you guys 20 minutes of content, if that makes sense. Um, but basically, just to go through this stuff in the beginning quickly, I had to go to that other theater today to be able to see this movie. I really wish that the theater closer to my house would show... Uh, more movies than kind of like the exact ones that everybody else is seeing like Barbie is still there but there are like two or three movies that could have come out um, at my theater that didn't and they came out the other one only but this is one of those movies um, so I ended up seeing it today one thing I want to say is that uh, today the other theater basically had no problems other than just that it's a little bit farther away to get to and I was able to scan my stuff no problem and today is actually like the $5 Tuesday night. And I learned that there is actually a smaller size popcorn than the regular size, which is what they give you with like this $5 deal where you get a small drink and a small popcorn on Tuesdays. And uh, it's not advertised anywhere on the board. Like it literally, I thought I was seeing something like secretive when they handed it to me. But that being said, if I could order that every time, and you know, I've been complaining about the freaking $17 regular popcorn combo. If I could get this exact combo that I got for $5 for like $8 every time, dude, that would solve my problems completely. My stomach doesn't hurt, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Um, I think that would just be the move. The only thing that sucks is that I try to get an IC with the smaller cup that's not like plastic and I just don't think that it worked the same if that makes sense and uh, I only really got the chance to drink like half of it because I didn't want to be messing around with my IC during the movie especially a movie like this uh, but anyway so the movie I saw was It Lives Inside and just to talk about some of the trailers this movie was made by a production company called Neon and basically all of the trailers that I saw tonight were jam-packed with neon trailers other than I saw another trailer for the creator and for the Bob Marley movie. Um, I'll be seeing the creator this week as well. So I'll be having a review for that up. Um, I'm starting to run out of pre-recorded videos. So you'll start seeing these kind of uploaded right after I do the video. But um, there was another interesting trailer tonight. Well, first of all, I think I'm definitely going to see that Five Night at, at Freddy's movie. It actually looks really good, and I don't know if I should catch up on the FNAF lore um, before I watch it or if I should play the game or what have you, but um, I think it would be kind of fun to maybe figure out how to live stream or record myself playing the game before going to see the movie, uh, but we'll see what happens with that. Particularly, scary video games are kind of... I haven't really built up the mental fortitude to play that kind of stuff yet i mean we used to play slender back in the day when that first came out but that barely worked on my laptop and it really wasn't scary um, but i think you know not to flex on y'all but i'm gonna try out playing this game and then we'll see how i feel about it i might just end up seeing the movie but that being said the movie uh, I saw another trailer for a movie called The Royal Hotel, I think it was. And dude, this movie looks absolutely forked. Like, it's something like these two students are trying to do like an exchange job in Australia somewhere. But man, like I would just recommend watching the trailer. The One of the like little headlines that they try to use that they got from a review from a film festival was like this is redefines... The word thriller or something like that and even just from the trailer you could tell how crazy this movie probably gets um i'm excited to see that and i had no idea about it beforehand and i'm starting to think that this company neon is in some way trying to do a similar thing to a24 where it's like they're living on their brand image of you know if you see a movie by us it's going to be good uh, but i haven't seen many other movies by them so if that is just something they're trying to do and their movies actually suck, then I'll be fooled by that. But maybe I should watch the Megan movie 
you know, kind of no more. But that being said, this movie, It Lives Inside, is about a girl who comes from an Indian family. She's Indian as well. They are very rich within their culture. They still practice it very much, or at least the mom does. It seems like the dad's, you know, not really into it. Well, not that he's not into it, but he just doesn't, he's not as uh, hardcore about it as the mom. And the mom kind of feels bad that the daughter doesn't really want to be associated with it whatsoever. Um, and you start to learn that part of that is because the daughter is really trying to fit in at her high school, which is apparently in Los Angeles, but their town was like very sparsely populated and everybody had a big house. So, you know, I don't know. Their class sizes in their high school had like 12 people. So again, like, I don't know. But you start to see that she doesn't want to be looked at as like that one Indian kid. And so for that reason, she starts to try to kind of downplay her background and stuff like that. Um, to the sadness of her mom. Now, what we find out, which we do see in the trailer, is that there is this other girl at her school who is also from a similar background who everybody thinks is super creepy and she's walking around with this jar all the time and like tapping it and like she hasn't been sleeping for days. Nobody knows what's going on with her. And essentially, you start to see tension build up between people trying to ask the main character, um, Sam, if I think her name is like Sumita, but she wants to be called Sam. It's kind of like another thing about that in the movie. But anyway, people are trying to ask Sam what's up with this person because this person is acting so weird and she's kind of fed up about it because she doesn't want to be associated with that person just because they're both Indian. But the truth is that they actually have been best friends growing up until they got to high school and she kind of dropped her. So for the whole like not wanting to be associated with her background sort of reason. And so it all kind of builds tension to this point where she has the jar and she, Tamira is the name of the other girl, and she walks up and she's kind of asking for help from Sumita to, for what we know, we don't know why, but she's asking for help and she says that there's this thing that's falling around and it lives inside the jar and it's trying to hurt her and it eats raw meat and it just keeps eating and, and you know, she can't control it anymore and she needs help. And then, uh, dude, in a cold ass move, Sumita is like, you're a fucking psycho. And she slaps the jar out of her hand and it breaks on the ground. Now, the rest of the movie is a thriller about the fact that there really was a freaking soul eater, flesh eater demon um, inside that jar. And now she's let it out, and now it's going to take um, Tamira, and it's haunting Sumita. And essentially, anybody that tries to help these people that that the demon is, is afflicting, they end up getting hurt in the process. Um, and the point of that is essentially, and you, see, you hear about this in the trailer, so it's not necessarily a spoiler, but this demon is like somebody that likes to eat other people's souls and like kill them and, and keep them and so what it does is it essentially wears you down it isolates you from other people in your life and makes you feel alone and then once you start feeling those feelings of sadness and and hatred and stuff like that it feeds on that energy and then it eventually once it's ready once you've been kind of once your soul has been tenderized in a way then it comes after you and it kills you and eats you so we find out, you know, through the course of events that this is a demon that is in East Indian like mythology and there's all, well, I guess I don't want to spoil the rest of the movie, so I'm not going to say anything else, but just they start to draw connections between other people and they start to unravel the mystery a little bit more. And the whole movie is kind of just like this whole demon thing is so unsettling, but I don't want to spoil it. I mean, it's a thriller, so part of the fun is finding out what's happening along the way. So I don't really want to talk about much more of the movie other than, you know, once I get done saying what I like about it, I'll kind of give like a, hey, I'm going to talk about spoilers and then tell you about something else. But um, anyway, what I think this movie was pretty good. I think that it did a really good job of 
basically keeping me on the edge of my seat. And I thought that the idea of using a demon that's from East Indian mythology and sort of educating me and using that whole culture as like the spotlight for this movie was really interesting. And I would love to see more movies that kind of delve into non-traditional um, like Hollywood culture. And what I mean by that is just like, you know, there's a million different movies about demons that are exercised by some Catholic priest. This movie being about a completely different, you know, mythology line was kind of badass. And it was super interesting. Um, another thing that I really liked about this movie was that the characters all seemed like very real. Like even at points where I was annoyed with the Semitic character in my head I was like well this person is like a sophomore or junior in high school and unfortunately at that age you would act this way um, even if it was hurting your parents or whatever like there's another cold ass thing she says to her mom and for a moment there I was like damn she is the worst but also I recognize that as a teenager you say things out of passion that you don't necessarily mean and it was just kind of sobering in the way of, like, I think all the characters acted very realistic. Other than there was one kind of like boyfriend type character named Russ. And his entire character is like not real. But uh, that's not really an important thing. But it's just like he would, this dude's like driving a fully souped up classic car in 2023. And he's just like randomly pulls the joint out in front of somebody that and anyway I'm just saying it his character was a little bit unbelievable but he didn't necessarily do a bad job um so other things I liked about this movie was it was very thrilling and at the same time a lot of the scenes where people were actually being aff afflicted by the demon were just filmed and choreographed in such a way that was so unsettling um so I really enjoyed that and then another thing that I really liked about this movie was they actually showed the demon like as a monster that was trying to get them and it could be physically harmed even though it had like you know the ability to do all sorts of demonic shit just was refreshing to see a movie where the monster can actually be seen there are so many movies like this where it's just this ominous force that exists in the room, but you're not, you don't have like a physical embodiment of it to look at. But not only was there one in this movie, but it was creepy as hell. And so I just really enjoyed that aspect of the movie. I wish that more people would do that moving forward. And also, I'm sure it was CGI, but the way that they did it, it looked almost like it was like an animatronic, like surrealistic sort of thing. And that was awesome um so spoilers incoming if you do not want to know any spoilers about this movie stop right now skip forward like a minute and then you'll see my review on it and you can move forward but just to in case you're worried i will say that if you are interested in a movie like this and you don't want to know the spoilers this movie is worth seeing in theaters so with that being said I'm going to talk about some spoilers right now. And um, one of them is that the way that you can defeat the demon is essentially to trap it in a vessel. But we found out at the beginning of the movie that a glass jar was not a good enough vessel. And we also found out throughout the movie that if only one person recites the prayer to, to kill the demon or to, not to kill it, but to trap it, then it will essentially kill the person that does it. You can never take on a dark spirit alone is kind of the, the premise of that. And so what happens at the end of the movie is the glass jar that they set out to trap the demon in gets broken as it, through the fight with the demon. And while they are able to recite the prayer together, Tamira and Samita, to trap it, Samita basically sacrifices herself in a way and becomes the vessel, which was foreshadowed earlier in the movie when you're looking at this painting and they talk about, you know, like the Swamis often felt like they could take on the burden to keep the demon inside of them. Which honestly makes me think about Jujutsu Kaisen a little bit where it's like if Sumida died, does the devil thing die too? Um, but anyway, 
the end of the movie, she traps it within herself. And then they go one year later and they show them kind of doing this whole dinner together with all the people that witnessed it. And she eats raw meat, which is essentially to feed the demon, um, which is just so surprising because I'm confused why you would try to feed it or appease it in any way. But maybe this is something I don't understand about East Indian culture or the mythology around that. That's okay. But what was interesting was that at the end of the movie, Tamira basically hugs her and is like, well, you know, I'm just so worried about you. And Samita's like, don't worry. We'll never let this thing out. Um, we got control of it. It's good. But then she, there's like an ominous music and she cries and sheds a tear. Right. So I, even though I really hope that this movie lives alone as its own thing and there's no sequel to kind of ruin the legacy of this movie itself, I think that um, that was a really interesting sort of way to end the movie because if you're thinking about it, everybody's thinking it once she takes it in. It's like, oh, so does she just get to live her life like this? No problem. Um, and I guess not because she seems insanely worried that this thing's going to come out if it hasn't already. So that that's basically the movie. Um, one thing that I thought was super interesting about, you know, trapping the demon was just that all I could think about was like Dragon Ball and uh, the Mufuba thing or um, Devil Man Cry Baby. And I'm just like, oh, does she get to have superpowers now that she's trapped this like yoked ass demon inside of her? But regardless. Um, like I said before, if I'm going to plug this movie into the where you should see it scale, I would say you should definitely see it in theaters if you like movies like this. If, you, if you're if you kind of on the fence, then I can understand why you wouldn't want to spend the $12 to go see it. But I really think that this is one of those scary movies that you get a lot of, uh, a lot of value out of seeing it in theaters. But uh, one thing that did happen, though, is like, Whatever format it was filmed in, the the very bottom of it is cut off and they put the subtitles for when they speak in Hindi um, down there and it was just like half cut off. So I don't know if it's like every AMC is going to have this problem or if it's just mine, but um, that's the thing. But I would see it in theaters. I really enjoyed my time. I think that, you know, if I'm plugging it into the out of five... Even though I, I'm kind of gushing about how much I kind of enjoyed going to see this movie and how thrilling it was, and it definitely made me feel kind of unnerved when I was leaving the theater, which I think is a hallmark of a good thriller. Like, that's how I felt when I saw Sinister as, like, a middle schooler. Uh, I was, like, messed up for a couple of days after that. But I have to say, this is definitely what I would say is, like, a low four, and... Just because, you know, there are aspects of the movie that don't shine as much as other movies that I would put above that. But I, I think this is a great movie and I really honestly would rank it up there with any of the other movies I've liked so far. Um, well, I don't know. I think I gave, I think I gave uh, Haunting in Venice like a strong, uh, uh, a good four. So I'm going to change my mind. It's not a low four. It's a good four along with a Haunting in Venice. I think they're two completely different movies, but if I think about the enjoyment I have between them, it's pretty similar. Um, but this one is pretty messed up, pretty good. If you're into movies like that, they keep you on the edge of your seat and you're just like waiting for something absolutely screwed to happen. Um, this is that type of movie. So like I said, I really enjoyed how they played into East Indian mythology because at least in America, we haven't heard any of that kind of stuff and it was super interesting. Um, so that being said, you know, that's the review. I definitely re recommend going to see it and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one.